yourself, you have no power to overcome anything, only through the blood of the Lamb, which is to hold your father's hand as a child would hold his or her father's hand, walking in a crowd. Because if that child lets go, because the traffic of people is so high, the child can be lost and taken and slaughtered. If you let go of the hand of your father, if you let go of the salvation, the blood of the Lamb, if you disregard what Yeshua HaMashiach did for you, you too will be lost and slaughtered. You will take the way of violence. Your conscience will be seared. If you continue to feed your flesh with earthly things, having the pride of life and the lusts of the flesh fulfilled, your hand will be severed from the Father, and your name will be blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life. Jesus is real. What he did is real. We are not the authority here on earth. God will and always wants the authority. We are the children who have to make a choice. Children who grow and carry the gospel of peace to other people. We are children. Now, this generation will endure the changes that the prophets told us about. We will endure those changes. Iniquity is a marker of the time that we live in. You see, when iniquity rises in the world, when men turn their backs on the Creator, and iniquity begins to abound, and the great falling away happens, the generation that sees that, that generation will not pass till all these prophecies are fulfilled. We're seeing them now. People are being possessed and pulling car doors off of cars, going into the highways and pushing cars over. Then you have vile individuals inside the body of Christ that will do anything to discourage and make you take off your helmet of salvation. I'll tell you this, forget about your trust in the person, but hear the word of the Lord coming from their mouths. You see, the gospel is peaceful. It is good and loving. But you have people speaking violence and hatred, accusation upon accusation. They have taken the way of Cain and slaughtered their brother Abel. Their portion is with the ungodly. They have chosen a side to be with the ungodly, and they'll suffer the price, and no one will be able to help them. The Lord gave us chance after chance to make a choice every single day of your life. Since you reached the age of accountability, you have been given a choice every single day up until this time to choose. God told us clearly, choose ye then this day whom ye will serve. We have had the time to choose. Should our Father decide to take us our lives, that we no longer dwell on the earth, you are stuck with the decision you have existing in this second. Whatever sin exists in your life that you have not repented for, you are stuck with. You see, the purpose of repentance is this. Because I tell you, no adulterer, no murderer, no fornicator, no liar will enter the kingdom of heaven. No thief will enter the kingdom of heaven. That's why the blood exists. So you can repent and be clean. But the problem now is this. People are taking that for granted. If repentance is to turn away from it and not do it again. And if the word says, a seed of God will not remain in the world, which means, in the original language, they will not continue to partake of the things of the world. It also went further to say they will not continue to sin. Though their bodies be vile, their vessels contaminate. They will have no desire in the world. You see, when you accept the Lamb of God, something happens internally. When you seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness, your desires change. Your words become clean. You don't continue to curse and use foul language. It's not in your heart anymore. There are certain things that will not, but for that individual who is unstable, a double-minded man who partakes in the wickedness of the world and only through guilt runs to the Father for forgiveness only to do it again because they've set in in their hearts that they're going to do it again anyway. They just need to feel clean for this moment. They have full intentions of going back into that sinful life because they hold on to everything they've obtained in the world. All the thoughts, the deadly wisdom of the world, the different system of the world, they hold on to it. They will not let it go. They have not fully surrendered, and they will not fully surrender. We can never forget that the blood of the Lamb is how we're saved to cleanse us. But if we continue in sin, purpose, tempting the Lord our God, do you not know what happens when you know you're sinning and you do it anyway? You're making a choice. Somehow we've lost 
our senses in this world by feeding the flesh and thinking it's okay because we plead the blood of Jesus. Yes, you're forgiven, but we go back into it again. Something is missing when we continue to do that. And you see, we wonder why our discernment is off. Discernment, and that gift of discernment is never wrong. And we wonder why it's wrong sometimes. It says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means there's no room for old things. If you renew your mind, it has new things in it. It did not say repair your mind. It said renew your mind to make it new again in the knowledge of the kingdom with the ways of the kingdom. And Jesus did say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Now why in the world did Jesus say that? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Why did he say that? A lot of people think that the kingdom has been here for a long time, but Jesus himself said to pray and say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He said that because this world is vile, full of darkness, covered in a veil. And when that veil is lifted, all things are exposed. Time will be no more. Prophecies will unfold and fold. People will cry and fall to their knees. At that point, they will know that God is real and that their beliefs and religions were vain. They will know a terrible God who is full of wrath. We will know a Father through Jesus Christ. But all of us will do that with fear and tremble until the acceptance that we feel in our soul is established. Only then can we stand in the first place. Your flesh won't survive. That's why you have to have a new body. You have to be changed. This flesh cannot survive in the presence of the Almighty God. It's dirty. Everything that has sin in it will melt away in the presence of the Almighty God. We have forgotten our fear of the Lord. That's why we do sneaky things. As though God is not listening. As though God can't see us. As though our thoughts are not continually at the throne of God. If he knows you, he can hear you. If he can hear you, he knows the deepest things of you. He searches hearts. He knows what's in your heart. Your wickedness, my wickedness that we hide, is fully exposed to him. We need to die to the flesh daily. We need to be real children of the Most High. We need to hold his hand tightly and never let that bond be broken by this world or any other world or any angel or anything. We need to accept the gospel that he preached and not accept anything else. No matter who it's given by, it's given by me, it's given by anybody, any other gospel than the gospel he preached, you get away from it. And when we do pass from this world, it's already written that we will be like the angels, neither male nor female. We're not going to carry the things of this world to the kingdom. When the kingdom is established, the things of this world will not be carried to it. Everything's going to be renewed. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word will continually endure, it will stay. The kingdom will be fully established, and this word will be in that kingdom, alive. We need to remember that. We have to make a choice, because a lot of people want to bring the joys of this world into the kingdom. Forget about it. It's not going to happen. Right now, our task is to make sure that we keep on our helmet of salvation, that we purge ourselves of the flesh and those things that go with the flesh. Subdue yourselves, your body. You are not your body. Your body is your vessel. It is tainted and filthy and will not go to heaven. Your body is not going to heaven, but it's your vessel. Keep it clean. Because anything that can take you away from worship of God, worshiping of Lucifer, is tricky. And we worship many things. If you get angry over your substance, if money changes your attitude, then I submit to you something at that point. That object or thing is stronger than the power of your God. You've forgotten about your God at that moment. Pay attention to that state. If something can make you angry at your brother or sister, it has overpowered your God within you. You see, because if God is strong in your life, you're not going to lose control. They went through the same problem in the Old Testament and the New Testament and had to put themselves in check and repent. All of us have done it. If someone steals from an individual, they steal their substance. What do people do? They forget about God. They want revenge. That's what they want. They want the person to pay. They forget about God at that moment. After they've expressed their anger and disdain and so forth. And you know what? Some people are disheartened a little. But you know what? The Lord's not through with you yet. He's not through with you. Don't ever feel hopeless or feel like you're stuck, captured in a position that those are, those are thoughts Satan wants you to have. The Lord's not through with you. He loves you. He's absolutely hands-on with you every day of your life. He's not done with you.
despite your position, his position, despite the things that you have to clean up in your life, he's not through with you. His love toward us can't be gauged. There's no love we can have within us that can compare to his towards us. As an infant cannot contribute to its parents, neither can you contribute to him, but he loves you despite anything. He, he loves you. He loves you because you're his child. He looks at you like an infant, knowing that you're going to stumble and fall. But he's with you and he's not finished with you. So don't feel hopeless. He understands everything about you, every tear, every heartbreak, every confusing thought, everything about you. Can an infant disappoint its father? No, it cannot. But it gives that father great joy. When the child grows, you see a parent is proud when that child takes the first step. But before a child takes a step, look at how rebellious the child is. Some of the first words it may learn is no. It doesn't do anything right. It makes a mess. All it wants to do is play, but it's still progressing. And as a parent, you'll look at that child and smile and be proud. And the child has no clue the love you had for it. Just like you have no clue of the love the father has toward you. He has commanded his love toward you. That's a statement within itself. He's commanded his love toward you. And so he sent his son so he could keep you, so you could come home. He's not done with you. We have many falls. We make many mistakes. We do many dumb things. That will not deter his love toward you. You see, because so long as you have your heart toward him, so long as thoughts of him are in your mind, even in your troubles, you still believe in him, that's faith. He's going to continue to love you. He desires that no one perish, not one. That's not his desire. He's not a cruel God. He's merciful and long-suffering, patient, full of grace. These times are extended so his children, all of his children, can make it home. He's not done with you. Don't let Satan trick you into thinking he's done with anybody. He's not. Oh, and by the way, let this be the security. Let this be the icing on the cake. You did not choose the Lord. He chose you. That's written in Scripture. He gave you to his son. You did not choose him. Your life was maneuvered so that you can only see him. Your life has been maneuvered. Your heart was maneuvered so that you can only see him. He chose you before you were ever conceived on this earth. He chose you. So don't let Satan put whispers in your ear that he's done with you. It's not done with you. You are his child. You're taking your steps. You're his child. He gave you to Jesus Christ and Jesus said he won't lose one of you. You belong to him. You're under his care. You're under the care of a multitude of heavenly beings. You are never by yourself or alone. That's another lie by the enemy. You always have company. Don't let him talk you out of your salvation to lure you back in the world. Don't let him do that. Satan is a slickster, a sneaky, dark entity who has lost his brains. He's condemned, yet he still tries because he's compelled to do it that way. But don't fall in his traps. Resist the enemy, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Don't give him an audience. Resist him. Don't entertain him, conversate with him. Resist him. Don't let him whisper in your ear. Resist him. When those whispers hit your mind, resist them. The good and the love of God is in you. The enemy does not want that in you because he cannot have that. He can't have that anymore. He cannot worship God anymore. He doesn't want you to have it either. He wants to mince the words and never feel secure. Don't let him lie to you. I feel that so strong on people. Now know that the events of the future will make people say, where is their God? Well, let them say it. It's already been prophesied. Let them say it. Pay no attention to that when you hear it. We know the end of the story. We know the outcome. We know he called us. We didn't call him. He called us. 